What's up YouTube, it's your main man, AB the Hero, back again with a, another video. And we finna get this 2020 started off right. And today's video is going to be about the one thing that the big baller brand needs to do in 2020 in order to have a successful foolproof launch. All right, so before we get this thing started, y'all know how we do. I told you, 2020, we got the giveaway going just to kick things off. If this video get 100 likes before I upload my next one, then I'm going to do a giveaway for somebody in the comment section. So, like the video, drop a comment, we get to 100, the merch is coming. Packing the mail is gone. All right, so let's get this thing started now. What I want to talk to y'all about is this one strategy that the big baller brand needs to do to solidify their launch. Okay, but before we get into this, let me give y'all a brief history and this so I can peek, so you just so you can understand what I'm trying to tell you here. Now, when you think about the big baller brand, um, there's a few names that come to mind. Very important names. Let's say uh, Demo. Let's say Will Pluma. Let's say Eli Scott, Big O, um, da Daquan, what's his name? Daquan, Daquan Davis, um, some of these guys from the JBA. Let's say Alan Foster. A lot of these names that don't end in ball, all right? Including, let's say, Andre Ball, obviously, that's a, but not one of the brothers, not one of the, the three Bs in the big baller brand. And why I bring those up and why I think that this is important to note is that Throughout the years, as the brand has been growing, there's always been these side characters. Obviously, you got the main characters, main characters, Lonzo, Jello, and Lamelo, but you always had these side characters. You always, back in the Chino Hills days, it was the Big O, it was Eli Scott, it was all of these guys around them who. Their association with the big baller brand raised their value. So you always had these folks who close to the brand, not one of the brothers, but you've seen that the brothers' star power raised at their star power as well. And it just kind of gave validation to what the brand had going. You look at Demo, look at how the brand has changed his life. When we see him pick up that red uh, Ferrari, was it, uh, for being the employee of the month, all of these things are to me one of the main reasons why folks started messing with the brand so heavy. If you really think about it, going way back, nobody has ever said, damn, them three Bs is so hot, like I really want the t-shirt. It's about all of the things that they're able to accomplish on the court and off the court that really is what solidifies the brand. Now, what I think is also important to note is those things are, some of those accomplishments are the way that they've been able to affect other folks. You look at a Jordan Ray, who went from relatively unknown to damn near 30,000 subs on uh, on Instagram. You look at the impact that they've had on these Vitotas team, who went to 100,000 subs on Instagram. The NBL, and how many eyes and views are on that at this moment. Uh, you look at the way that they've just affected so many people's lives who have been next to them, which is why, which is what made the idea for the JBA such a good idea because it gives you an opportunity to really impact more people. One of the things that people loved about LeVar when the brand first jumped off was not only did he put the work in with his own boys, he put the work in with everybody in the neighborhood. So you look at a guy who is and stealing a business acumen in his boys, but then also instilling a hard work ethic in the entire community. This is why the brand to me, this is also why I always thought it was super dope, is because it wasn't just always about basketball, it's about changing the mindset of folks, right? So yeah, you super talented, you got three boys, they could go get a deal with Adidas or they can own their own shit. And that is what I think that the big baller brand has to do 
is get back to touching more lives than just the three boys. Obviously at this point, it's a big deal for LaMelo and Lonzo and Jello to be on board and especially with Melo uh, getting ready to make this jump into the NBA and potentially be the number one pick in the 2020 draft. It's all, that's important, that's hella important. I'm not saying that that's not, but I think that what they have to do is keep continuing to have these touch points with other folks and uplifting people whose last name is not Ball. When you look at this, and this is an easy thing to do, right? Because it's already built in. And y'all know that I'm a huge advocate of and supporter of the folks who played in the JBA, right? But I think that that is the, the, the place to start, hands down. The number one thing that you have to do at this moment if you're gonna relaunch the Big Baller brand in a way that creates some value for everybody involved is support these dudes who playing ball right now overseas pro who have already benefit from being in your line of of people who you helped out look at this curtis hollis right now is playing basketball in germany on his way to the bbl the biggest league in germany averaging damn near 27 7 and 7 dominating you look at what we have with um um, Brandon Willis, three-point assassin, just took off and is in Georgia right now. In his debut game, dropped 24, 25, 7, and 3 or something like that. Iso Rail is also playing ball right now, pro in Germany. I mean, in Georgia, uh, you had Harrison Rieger win a championship in El Salvador and damn there was an MVP. Harrison Rieger was putting up stats like 30 and 20 rebounds or something stupid like that. Dion Lyle was playing in Armenia, playing in the ABA. You got guys all around the world. Um, Josiah Pope was playing in China. Brandon Willis was playing in China. Right now, as we speak, um, Neon Weck, Big Taco, is playing, or he got an injury, but is in South Sudan right now playing for the national team. All of these guys should be draped in BBB. They should be putting on. They should be taking that back to those countries that they're going to play ball in and their affiliation with the brand, with the JBA, should be something that should last their entire careers. It's built in, it's set in stone. These dudes right now, the BBB were to give these dudes right now some type of merch, merch sponsorship deal, even if it wasn't like just straight out, you finna get hella rich off this deal, but it was just like, yo, we gonna make sure you draped and dripped out and BBB for the foreseeable future. That would be something that would go a long way into securing the rise of BBB back to its prominence, especially because the involvement from the three brothers is such in so in lieu right now you would still have your name and have content to put out because every time Curtis Hollis drops 27 and five, goes down and dunks on somebody, you got that highlight that you could put on the BBB accounts of him at least in the BBB socks with the headbands and all of that stuff and him talking about it. When, when Brandon Willis is knocking down threes from the outside, going stupid like he always does, you have those opportunities to share that content and you have these folks who are built in because they know that their time within the JBA and with the Big Baller brand is played a, a big part in solidifying what they're doing on the pro level. Obviously, a lot of these dudes have put in hella work and have been able to find these opportunities, but what I've seen from a lot of these dudes as they go and get these pro contracts, when these teams say, yo, we just signed um, Iso Rail, we just signed Brandon Willis, we just signed Montreal Dixon, one of the big things that they highlight is played on JBA USA, played in the JBA, and, and they will uh, announce those stats. So while a lot of folks here, because that's what we do in the United States, we don't like to give credit when credit is due, they have not given the adequate amount of credit to the league internationally. It's a lot of respect put on that league because they know that when them boys from the JBA USA went down to Moscow and touched down on Seska Moscow and came out with a W, when they went to St. Petersburg and was down by like 20 and Melo went to work and came back, they realized that was something special. When they were in uh, Macedonia and the guy was looking around the stadium and was like, yo, 
there's more people in here tonight for this JBA USA game than damn near three games of ours combined without them being here. They realize the value. And I think that the one thing that the brand needs to do right now, tomorrow, yesterday, is really pour into these guys who are hooping right now who love their affiliation with the brand and would love to have that support and that connection with with what's happening pour into them and take it to the next level shamay man ab the hero i'm going to come back with this type of video where i'm giving y'all the bullet points the five steps to really blow this thing up for 2020 and like i said it's shamay man ab the hero i'm out